Hi guys, welcome back to our final lecture in the chemistry of life chapter. Sorry, I'm I'm eating cheesecake for breakfast. So um, I need to move that out of the way. Otherwise, I'm going to be snacking all during lecture. Okay, so um, part two, we didn't quite finish the lipids. We left off talking about triglycerides. Um, so let's just recap a little bit. First off, we're talking about organic compounds. Uh, living things are made mostly out of organic compounds. And there are uh, multiple different categories. There are um, carbohydrates, like sugars and starches. There are lipids, like fatty acids and triglycerides and steroids. There are proteins, which we're going to talk about in a second, and there are nucleic acids, um, which we'll also talk about at the end of this lecture. So right now we're talking about lipids. A classic feature of lipids or like fats and oils is that they're hydrophobic. Remember, a phobia is a fear. Hydro is water. So the fact that lipids are hydrophobic means that they are water fearing. They don't like water. And you've seen this. If you've never done this before, go put some oil in water and see what happens. The oil does not dissolve. The oil and water don't mix, right? The oil goes and it all sucks together to try and get away from the water. The oil, i.e. the lipid, does not like water. You can try and shake it up. You can try and stir it around. And the minute you stop applying force, the oil's all going to congregate together because it's trying to get away from the water. This is extremely important to keep in mind. Lipids, which are non-polar, non-charged compounds, do not like water. Now, um, <clears throat> different lipids um, are used for different things. We said that lipids can be used for energy, right? If we don't have sugar to burn, we can burn fats instead. And in that case, we would be using a fatty acid. So fatty acids are the lipids that we use for energy. Now, when we have plenty of energy and we wanna pack it away and store it for later, we'll convert those free fatty acids, like one single fatty acid chain, into something called a triglyceride. And that was the last thing we had talked about at the end of part two, was a triglyceride. Remember, that is a glycerol head molecule like this, that has fatty acid tails attached to it. And how many fatty acid tails does a triglyceride have? Three, right? Tri means three, like a tricycle has three wheels. So <clears throat> it's a glycerol with um, a non-lipid group and three, um, the glycerol non-lipid group and then these three fatty acid tails. Um, <clears throat> again, this is the way we store fatty acids. We can't link these chains directly to each other. So if we want to, um, you know, link them all together and store them away, we link them to this glycerol molecule. And that's how we would store the fat. Then <clears throat> say we haven't eaten in a while and we need to use this fat for energy. Well, if that's the case, we would just break off that fatty acid and then go use it for energy. <clears throat> break off the next one, go use it for energy break off the next one, go use it for energy. Okay. Um, remember the, the type of chemical reaction that we use to do that is called hydrolysis. Okay, hydrolysis reactions, hydro meaning water, lysis, to lyse something is to break it apart. So water comes in and breaks that bond um, and then we have the fatty acid that we can use for energy. That's where we left off. Now, we're going to continue on with our discussion of lipids by talking about steroids. Steroids are um, rather large lipids that all share a distinctive carbon framework. Right? Remember, all of, these, um, <clears throat> all of these molecules that we're talking about right now all have carbon and hydrogen present. And we talk about their carbon framework or the carbon chain that's present. Steroids all share this same carbon framework that consists of four carbon rings, right? So their carbon, um, their carbon atoms, not like that, 
are arranged in a ring structure, right? And there ends up being four rings that are all linked together. All steroids share the same four ring structure. And then they have stuff that sticks off the rings that makes them different, okay? But they all have the same four ring structure. And then again, they're different functional groups on different types of steroids. There are um, <clears throat> numerous different types of steroids. Cholesterol is a steroid. I'm sure you guys have all heard of cholesterol before, and you probably think it as, of it as something bad, right? Like people say, oh God, you know, I've got high cholesterol. Um, <clears throat> but there's all different types of cholesterol, and some cholesterol is actually good. It's actually healthy cholesterol. But you do need cholesterol, some of it. You don't want too much, um, but you do need cholesterol. It is a, a functional, helpful um, steroid. We use cholesterol as a component of the plasma membrane or cell membrane. The, um, the plasma membrane is the outer wall around the outside of our cells. So like the barrier around the outside of the cell. Now that plasma membrane is primarily made up of something called a phospholipid, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It's a different type of lipid. But thrown throughout those phospholipids, we do have cholesterol present. Um, and the amount of cholesterol kind of controls how flexible that plasma membrane is. Cholesterol is also a precursor um, for a lot of other steroid hormones. So we use it when we're making other steroid hormones. Um, other steroid hormones are things that you've probably thought of before or you've heard of, you're familiar with. These include the sex hormones. So um, estrogens, as well as, I don't have it on here, but progesterone, those are the female sex hormones. Um, and then testosterones, these are the male sex hormones. Um, <clears throat> all of these sex hormones are classified as steroids. They're lipids, they're fats, they all have the same four ring structure. There are also some other types of hormones that are steroids. These include corticosteroids, um, corticosteroids like cortisol, which is the stress hormone, um, or hydrocortisone, and then also calcitriol. Calcitriol is a hormone that's important for calcium regulation, hence calci, right? Calcitriol, that's important for managing the amount of calcium that we have in the bloodstream. But the point is all of these are steroids. That means all of these have the same um, basic four ring structure. All of these are lipids, right? Which means that they're fatty, they're non-polar, and that means that they don't like water. Here you see um, some examples of steroids. Again, cholesterol, estrogen, testosterone, Looking at these, you can very easily see that they're steroids because of the four rings, right? One, two, three, four. They all have that in common. Now, everything else on there um, can be different. So you see like there's a really big um, group up here, whereas here there's just a small functional group. So they do differ in other areas. Over here, there's an OH, a hydroxyl, and here there's a double bond O. That's what makes them different, but they all have the same four ring structure in common. All right, so moving on to another type of lipid. Um, we'll finish up the lipids by talking about phospholipids. Phospholipids are extremely important in um, the human body. And the reason for this is that phospholipids are the main components, they're the most common component that makes up the plasma membrane or cell membrane. Again, this plasma membrane is the barrier around the outside of our cells. So like the outer wall around the outside of all of our cells is made up of phospholipids. Okay, specifically, we'll see in a minute, it's called a phospholipid bilayer. Bi meaning two. So there's two layers of phospholipids that make up our plasma membrane. So 
The structure of these phospholipids is incredibly important to their function, right? It's directly related to their function, which we always see, right? Anatomy relates to physiology. When we look at phospholipids, we see that they are diglycerides attached to a phosphate group and a non-lipid group. A diglyceride is a lipid right? It's di meaning two, so like a triglyceride. Remember, a triglyceride is the glycerol with three fatty acid tails. Well, if we have a glycerol with just two fatty acid tails, that's a diglyceride. So a diglyceride attached to a phosphate group and a non-lipid head group, that's a phospholipid. <laughs> The reason that this structure is so important to their behavior is that it has lipid, a lipid part and a non-lipid part. This diglyceride, that is a lipid, right? That is fatty, meaning it does not like water. So this tail region down here is hydrophobic, right? It does not like water. However, this head part, right, the phosphate and this non-lipid part up top, those areas do like water, right? So they're, that's what hydrophilic means. Hydrophilic means water loving. So in this one single molecule, it's one thing, one phospholipid, it has two parts that behave opposite each other. The head loves water, interacts with water, wants to go hang out in water. The tail hates water and wants to get away from it. Hey, this is very important to the way they behave in our plasma membrane. We call that amphipathic. Okay, amphi um, means both. So think about like an amphibian. Um, <clears throat> amphibians go in both land and water. That's why we call them amphibians. They're not just land animals, um, or they're not, they're not just on land, they're not just on water, they're both. Um, or like an amphibious vehicle can go in both land and water. Amphi means both. So amphipathic, they have both a water-loving region and a water-fearing region, okay? Super, super important. Okay, here you guys see the structure of a phospholipid. Um, <clears throat> again, this is a special type of lipid. Um, it has a phosphate group and a lipid group, hence the term phospholipid. Uh, this is a super important, or the structure is super important because this head region up here likes water, right? So this head region, this is the region that's hydrophilic. And then this whole tail region is lipidy, right? The fatty acid area. So that part's hydrophobic. Here you can see kind of a rough drawing of how phospholipids all line up together to form the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. So this would loop all the way around. Right, this whole structure goes around like this to form the barrier. It goes like a sphere to form the barrier on the outside of all of our cells in the body. So this is inside the cell and this is outside the cell. So all this is outside the cell. Now, inside our cells is filled with water, okay? Intracellular fluid. So this is all filled with water amongst other things outside of our cells is also water okay our body's mostly water so all out here outside the cell we have even more water so this plasma membrane he is made up of what we call a phospholipid bilayer What that means is it's two layers 
of phospholipids. And you see that, right? So this is in, let me change colors. This is a layer of phospholipids out here, right? So like that is one layer. And then this is another layer. You can see that the phospholipids arrange themselves in a very specific pattern or a very specific arrangement. You'll notice all of these little like orange circles these are showing you the heads. So all of the heads are to the outside here. And then the tails reach inside the membrane. Then the other layer arranges itself so that all of these heads are facing the inside of the cell. And then the tails go into the center of the membrane. The reason for this is that remember, the heads of the phospholipid like water. They're okay with water. So they face the outsides where there is water. These tails, all this area in the center, all of these tails are fatty. Those areas are lipidy. They're hydrophobic. They do not like water. So they, they arrange themselves so that the tails go squishing towards the center to try and get away from the water. So those fatty tails don't have to come in contact with the water at all. Now, <clears throat> this creates a really good barrier that makes it hard for most things to get in um, into the cell or out of the cell. Because if you think about if something is, is outside of the cell right here and it wants to cross into that cell, it has to go through this membrane. So it's going to have to travel through this region right here that's pure lipids. Okay, so anything that doesn't like lipids won't do that. It's repelled by that fatty area. Okay, so most of the stuff that's hanging out out here in our body, anything with a charge, so like glucose, ions like sodium and chloride and potassium, um, all of those things like water, they all have some sort of a charge. They don't like lipids. So they won't just cross straight through here to get into the cell. Okay, now we do have proteins and channels present that allow us to move that stuff in, but that means we can control it, right? We can control when that ion enters the cell by opening or closing this gate. Okay, it's not going to go straight through this plasma membrane because of this fatty area in the middle. The only things that will cross straight through this fatty area are things that like fats. Okay, so things that like fats, just to kind of give you a heads up on this, we'll get to it more later, but things that like fats, we say that they are sorry, we say that they are lipophilic. Hey, things that like fats are lipophilic because they like lipids, right? Lipo. Um, remember, we said things that like water are hydrophilic. Now, these are opposites right? Water and lipids, they're opposites. Water has charges. It's a polar molecule. Lipids are really well balanced. They are nonpolar. So those things are opposites. So the things that like lipids, right? The things that are lipophilic are different than the things that are hydrophilic. So you could say if something likes lipids, it does not like water. So something that's lipophilic is also hydrophobic. It does not like water. And then the opposite is also true. Something that is hydrophilic, right, that likes water, does not like lipids. So you could say it's lipophobic. The last thing I want you to kind of add to this little juxtaposition is that these things that like lipids are nonpolar, right? When we remember in um, the lecture where we talked about chemical bonds, 
and we talked about covalent bonds. And you know that covalent bonds can be polar or nonpolar, right? They can be um, balanced with no charge anywhere, or they can be unbalanced where there are charges in the molecule. Okay, those that are nonpolar, right, with no charge, those things like lipids. The ones over here that like water, those are polar compounds or charged ions. Okay. That concept, super important. It's going to follow us through all of AMP1 and all of AMP2. Okay, so if you understand like these few facts up there at the top, you will understand so many other concepts better. Um, this chart down here, guys, just summarizes different types of lipids. Okay, we've already really talked about all of that.